is that people talk about and you might not be used to is Recap Pro. Uh, the difference between Recap Pro and Recap, some people call it Recap Studio. Uh, Recap Pro allows you to register scans together. Recap just allows you to visualize and actually work with the data once you have it. Okay, so what's really important and the way we're seeing consultants and later scanning companies use this scan data is their number one deliverable. Every time they put a bid or something together uh, for their firm, what do I get after you scan this data? What do we get? And it's always been, well, we'll give it to you this, but you gotta buy this software. We'll give you this, but you can only get distance. So now they have usable data and what the number one 3D uh, software in the world is, which is Autodesk, right? So what we can do is scan in pretty much any format that you want, export it out, and save it as an RCS or an RCP file, which is a project file that goes directly into Recap. To talk about this a little bit to kind of give everybody an idea, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into Recap Pro. Uh, let me explain it a little bit here in more detail. So the idea of Recap Pro, again, this is a, the one you don't get for free. You can get a 30-day trial, go out and scan a project. Uh, I guess we usually, I did so many scanning presentations, it's not really new technology to myself. I've been doing this since 98. Uh, we could have scanned this side of the room, walked over there, did another scan, and they would have went together. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Uh, I think just about everybody in here raised their hand when they've seen scanning or scanned in. If anybody wants to see this run, it takes two seconds to turn it on and we can do that for you. The idea is after you run a scan, you move the scanner to get around objects that cannot be seen from the first location to put them together. Think of this as a, a puzzle. Each scan location is a piece of the puzzle and as we move it around, we need to bring these together. So in order to do that, uh, they fit together and we just mash these up, which is completely targetable. So all we do is load a one scan, you drag the other scan in there, and once you pick your points, it will automatically put this data set together for you. So to give you an idea how easy this is, uh, basically what I did is just dragged one in here. It looks like I don't have the files to show you though. Uh, I tried to make a shortcut. Let me see if I can get this other one to load if I find it. And literally you can just drag the information over here and drop it in. I might have to, uh, to reload this. But as you load this in here, then all this does is go around and turns blue. And then this pops up into a viewer once these are done. And then you can actually pick the three points and put it together. It's uh, pretty easy. Of course, uh, today it's not, it's not loading for me here. <laughs> yeah, of course, right? <laughs> give, me, uh, give me one second here. If not, uh, Afterwards or in between here, come bug me. Let me see if I can find these. When I was talking, I accidentally dragged one. I moved it, and I didn't want to waste the time to find it again, so I moved it to the desktop. So let's see if I can uh, track this down. It should be under E Drive, AU, CSV, Scans. Uh, hopefully, at least this one will, will load for me. I'm just going to drag this one over and drop it in. <laughs> totally missing, I guess, here. So they were nice and organized. Yeah. There we go. Let's try one more time here. Maybe uh, a guy down got back into me in time. It really is super, super easy. <laughs> uh, and if not, you can always go out and select these as well. So let's try this real quick here. CSV, scans. I only got one here is the, the problem. But as this loads, I might be running out of space. Oh, there this goes. I'm not sure what happened last time. I was hoping to have one done for you already so you guys didn't have to watch paint drying for this to load. It only takes about a minute, maybe two. In the meantime, while we're waiting for that one real quick, I'm gonna see if I can grab this other one. Is it? Is that what happened? So I didn't copy the whole thing across is probably uh, the problem. Let's see if we can find it real quick here. I would do a search for scan data, but it would take way too long to, uh, way too many of them here. <laughs> Let's see, where are we at? <laughs> yeah, the Mac, is that what you guys said? All right, let me see. Uh, has anybody put scans together before? Anybody did this? Okay. It's pretty easy. Everybody agree that's easy? I'm going to do one more thing here. I don't know where I dragged it to earlier. Go here. You can see it loaded the one. Really, we load the other one. Let's see if it finds. Uh, whoops. Let's reload the other one quick. Come on. Where in the 
to that movie on Steam. Let me try the new project raw data. No zero two, I didn't look actually. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, it was zero. Uh, but it's loaned from uh, from back here, so. All right, it's the reason we go live, right? Can't have everything go perfect. <laughs> Wouldn't be as much fun. Uh, so literally, you can take as many scans as you want, drag and drop them in here. Each of the pieces of the puzzles load up as they load up uh, at any time. So if you have uh, you know 20 different scans, 100 scans in here, as they load, you can start doing the registration. You don't have to wait for all of them to load up. You can just start as soon as you have two. You can probably start as soon as I have one here. In the meantime, what I'll do is not watch paint dry. So we're going to go back over to here. Uh, the idea is what it's going to look like when we're done. And it's supposed to look very, very easy because it is. <laughs> as long as you find your files and you drag and drop them to the right location. Uh, with that in mind, uh, Autodesk will always say scanning is easy. And it literally is. We could teach anybody in this room to set up a scan, hit a button to scan, move to the other side and do the same thing. So I tested this with my little girl. She turns two next month. Literally, there's a great big green button, and she figured that out, and she was able to hit it and start her own scan. The, the idea is what I want to tell everybody about is recap is very easy to use, but I very encourage you to make sure that you have a professional that's did scan in the past. Uh, the reason for that is at first it's very, very easy, but if you run into any problems, make sure you have a backup plan or somebody you can consult with that knows why it went wrong or why it went off the track so you can go back and fix it as well. So as the information comes across, we have a couple different uh, options. We can go through and tell it to register the information. You're actually looking at the photos from the scanners at this point. You can use uh, the Faro, you can use the ZNF, and you can also use the P20. The only thing with Leica right now, we actually bring it in through Cyclone, and then we spit it out to bring it into Recap as well. You can actually do this in 2D or 3D. If you're in 2D and you're scanning maybe a factory or uh, a lot of different rooms inside of a building, you can just pick two points that line up. So if you see a wall and the same points are on the two points of that wall, just match two, and they go together very seamlessly. In this case, we're going to show you in 3D. 2D is a little bit quicker. You have to have a little bit better eye for detail of what you're looking at. And again, to switch from the windows, you can just go from here to there to, to get that to, to come out. Whoops. All right, maybe we're not going to do it, guys. <laughs> So apparently I had another 003, so I'm not going to waste your guys' time with this. Uh, but the idea, you would just go in here and you would just pick three points. So I would go up here and pick a point. It doesn't have to be an exact point. As long as you're off just a little bit, it's fine. You can drag it over here. You can pick pretty much any point. Uh, you know, you just want to try and make sure that it's close. The idea and the goal is as long as you're on three different planes, you're going to get very good results. Uh, you can go pretty close together, but uh, as algorithms work, the farther away and the more – the more planes you work, the better results you're going to get. So I'd pick the three points here. I'd go over here and do the same thing with those three points. And magically, in a matter of seconds, it goes together. And then it would open up. And you would have a point cloud inside Recap. So to give you an idea of what it would look like in here. Whoops, that's not going to work as easy as I wanted to either. So we are going to suspend this one. go to open and I'll show you what it looks like when it was all done and that's what you get when your scan data doesn't go together <laughs> let me see guys I got too many uh, files in here this one should be it there we go actually this, uh, this might work better so we can do register the scans save a little grace here <laughs> hopefully so this is the one I must have did earlier, so I didn't save it as registered data. So we can quickly go in now, go and grab uh, three like similar features. So if we want to pick the, the screen up here, we could do that. We could grab an exit sign. Uh, usually I don't pick on the exit sign. You just want to find a, a plane that's easily uh, available. So make sure I grab the, the same one here. And as you pick the third one, you saw each of them had different colors. And then if you connected the, the three close enough together, it does an algorithm and automatically puts these together. Yep. Yep. 
Absolutely. And then as long as you get green, you can move on. If they were close or they want you to look at it, it would actually turn yellow. And if you get red, you want to make sure you verify the results of why you got red and go back and th pick three new points. If you got green, you can see that it actually gives you the amount of overlap, the balance, and the percentage of the points that match within that tolerance of less than six millimeters so we can improve it. And now you can see we have the entire room put together. And you can look at the preview of this. So now you're still looking at the photos, but we're going to do a switch over and actually look at the point cloud. And now here's the entire room <coughs> with the photos put together inside there. Cool. And you can see you get these little locations or markers where each scan took place. And you can actually go into each one of these at any time, and it takes you back to the photo. You can pan around and at any time go back to the, the preview as well. Okay, so imagine doing that through an entire million square foot of a building or a factory. And I think uh, Dave is going to talk about that right after this as well. And go into more detail. We can publish the data. So we can actually publish it online to Autos 360. Anybody that's on subscription automatically has an account. I think you get, if anybody remembers, 25 gig or at least 10 gig uh, to share that data with any of your customers. So instantly we go out, we scan. We create a deliverable, we publish it, and the client's looking at everything you just captured, uh, hopefully in that exact same day. Uh, I don't know, I think Dave might share some workflows with you as well on how we do that. And then simply go across here to make sure your settings are okay, across the top, and then you can hit launch project. And it will take just a couple more seconds to unify this scan to this scan, so it'll become one point cloud. Again, if you have 50 of these, it would take this, this time or distance uh, across all 50 of them, as you see it going across the, the bottom here. Quick questions while we're waiting for the percentage. What do you want? Two. Yep, so it's uh, the amount of data compared to one point cloud to the other point cloud. So when it overlaps that data, each scan is within six millimeters of accuracy. You'll notice that once this uh, launches, that if you do get reflection, uh, that's why you don't ever, typically you won't get 100% of the points within six millimeters. You'll see some scan data that was actually outside the room. Maybe a door opened or, you know, did reflect. So you'll notice it's outside the room and there was no point to match it to as well. There you go. So you can see some of the data out here. Maybe a door was open and the door closed during the scan. So different things like that. There's always... Uh, you know, different information or aspects during the scan that might, maybe someone was walking in the room and they moved, uh, so it captured different information that didn't match it perfectly. But now you're looking at the, the live scan data here, so we can pull measurements, we can, uh, you know, zoom, pan, whatever we want. We can actually go in and look at the photographs from any scan location as it was captured and get measurements. Nope, if they're walking around, if they're walking, it's going to get at least some lines of data on them. So depending on how fast they walk through there, there's going to be some noise in that area. Nope, it does not. There's no automatic cleanup. It will still, it doesn't use it for the algorithm to put it together, but it, it doesn't clean it up either. So we do have to do that as well. So some of the cleanup tools you can use, there's, there's a lot of different methods. Uh, one that I'll talk about in a little bit, you can do, uh, you can create a unified box. We can rotate this if we want to. We can kind of change it to look inside here, which is kind of cool. So we can save these different views. 